Happy new moon in Scorpio. This Scorpio new moon becomes exact at 11.38 p.m. New York time on Sunday, October 27th, which is also 3.38 Greenwich Mean Time on October 28th. If you live in the northern parts of the U.S., like I do, or in Europe or Canada, you'll know that the leaves have already turned into beautiful colors of red, yellow, or orange and have begun to litter the ground. There is such beauty in the sights and smells of autumn, which is really the death of summer if you think about it. As Scorpio season now rolls around, we are being invited to explore the themes of death, rebirth, transformation, and power. With Mercury and Venus joining the sun and moon in Scorpio, relationships will come to the forefront of our attention. Family dynamics and matters of the heart will be one of the main themes for the next 28 days. I'm going to address both family dynamics and romantic relationships in order to help you understand more fully how you can best use this time to transform and evolve. Family Dynamics Have you ever heard of a thing called the life plan? Have you heard that you choose your parents, siblings, place of birth, and even your future partners before you are born? This is all completely true. Before you come into the body, you are the soul. As the soul, you work with spirit guides and other souls to intricately create your life plan. Where you are born, the parents you are born to, and the gists of your relationships with those parents and any siblings and your romantic partners are just a few of the things that are planned out pre-birth. The intention of the life plan is to create the necessary situations that will give you the opportunity to negotiate the lessons your soul desires for you to work through. As you complete or partially complete each lesson, that experience gained contributes to the evolution of your soul. The particular lessons your soul chooses to partake in in any given lifetime are directly related to karma accumulated by the soul in previous lifetimes. The soul always wishes to balance the positive and the negative aspects of all possible themes that could be experienced. On top of general karma from past lives that the soul wishes to balance in a particular lifetime, there is also specific karma that exists between particular souls. For example, you and your mother, let's say, may have incarnated together many times, perhaps being sisters in one lifetime, friends in another, and husband and wife in yet another. In this example, there would be some karma carried over from the most recent incarnation where you and your mother incarnated together. Let's say that in the most recent lifetime with your mother, you actually play the role of husband and wife. Perhaps the character your soul was playing had left the character your mother's soul was playing and ran off with another man. Perhaps your mother's character felt betrayed. In this example, the memories of that relationship from that most recent lifetime would be in the cells of each of your bodies during this lifetime. Perhaps in this lifetime, your mom would be overbearing and overprotective of you because she would have a deep-seated fear of you betraying her. Perhaps she would get jealous of your partners. Perhaps she would, ask, she would act passive-aggressively or even manifest illnesses to see if you truly loved her and cared about her or if you would just leave her like you did in that past lifetime. You're, you can tell when there is significant past life karma between family members when you often have irrational emotional reactions to things that shouldn't logically cause such a reaction or maybe they have those emotion, irrational emotional reactions. You might intuitively feel that there is a deeper issue with a particular family member than just what has happened in this lifetime. Oftentimes, there is significant past life karma with those family members with whom we have the most difficult relationships 
in this lifetime. The natural evolution of all relationships is toward resolution, whether it seems like it or not. Each soul desires not only to balance its personal accumulated karma, but also the specific karma it carries with another soul. This karma can be worked out in the afterlife if need be, but it seems that souls see the most value in working through karma on the earth plane. So even for those really difficult family relationships which seem like it will be impossible to resolve the relationship in this lifetime, there still is a chance that the opportunity will arrive in the future for some resolution to occur. Sometimes it requires one of the people involved to be on their deathbed, but it doesn't always need to get to that point prior to resolution. Each relationship is entirely unique, and thus there isn't any one-size-fits-all approach that will heal every relationship. Sometimes giving someone the benefit of the doubt and being willing to forgive and let go of what happened in the past leads to a renewed relationship that is supportive to both parties. Sometimes, however, a relationship isn't ready to move into a healthier stage of its evolution, and the best option for the well-being of both parties, actually, is for the relationship to end. And this includes relationships with family members. There are situations where it just communication has to stop, at least for a while. And it doesn't mean it has to be for the rest of your life, but it may be that the communication needs to stop for a year, five years, ten years, in order for there ultimately to be a resolution. Sometimes there is a third option, and that is having limited communication with someone while loving them from, from afar. A mature spiritual being knows when someone isn't good for them and is willing to still love and support them, but just from afar. I have found that for pretty much all of the friends that are still left over in my life from before my awakening, I've chosen the support from afar option. I still talk to these old friends, but I'm not comfortable hanging out with them more than once in a while. Oftentimes, a bit of separation is all a relationship needs to rebalance itself. You might argue constantly with your mom. <laughs> you might. I was just thinking of my own life, <laughs> at least from uh, not so much now, but definitely earlier in my life. <laughs> you, might ar- you might argue constantly with your mom uh, while you live with her, for example, But when your job takes you out of state and you see her only once a year, all of a sudden you both might realize that your time together is precious and you both will naturally let go of grievances you're holding against one another. We learn most from the most difficult relationships. Those family members or ex-partners that trigger us the most are inevitably helping us to negotiate our pre-planned life lessons. So realize that though the frustration is there for whichever relationship comes to mind for you when we're talking about this, and, and rightfully so, the frustration is not for naught. There, there is a point to all of this. These most difficult relationships are giving you an opportunity to grow spiritually and to do exactly what you'd plan to do before you put on your body suit as a human being. The most difficult part often is figuring out what you are meant to learn. Sometimes your relationship is trying to teach you how to respect yourself. Sometimes it is trying to teach you how to let go. And sometimes it's trying to teach you how to become your truest self. While other times it's teaching you how to be vulnerable. Here are some questions to consider when ruminating on your familial relationships and how you can best navigate them especially the difficult ones. And I do suggest if you do have the time to journal on these questions here. What is it that irritates me about this person? What is it that irritates me about this person? 
do I tend to do the same thing that this person does that irritates me, but in a smaller dose? If so, could I acknowledge that that I do maybe do this, just maybe on a smaller scale, and make that part of me who does that feel a little bit more welcome? If I were to truly honor myself, is there something I would tell this person, even if it might make them upset? How might my relationship with this person shift if I were to consciously make an effort to appreciate their positive qualities more? And just a note, this does not mean it's okay to stay in any sort of abusive relationships. How might loving myself a bit more lead to a better relationship with this person? Might some distance between myself and this person actually improve our relationship? Partnerships. When planning an incarnation, the soul will generally plan out several significant romantic partnerships that are meant to take place during your lifetime. You will enter any given romantic relationship at a certain level of consciousness and evolution on your human journey, but you are always growing whether you know it or not. Every romantic relationship provides a tremendous potential for soul growth as you navigate your pre-planned life lessons. The more difficult the relationship, the faster the potential for growth. And note, this doesn't mean you should go out of your way to look for dysfunctional relationships because what I said is that there is a potential for growth. It is also possible to stay stuck in a, in a few particular lessons and continue to manifest the same dysfunctional relationship with different characters over and over again. There is such thing as, soul, as a, a soul contract between each person in a romantic relationship. The soul contract was created before birth and states the general lessons or themes that the parties will be helping each other to work through. It includes any major events that were pre-planned to occur during the relationship, such as accidents, illnesses, or a temporary separation. And it also will include different, different possibilities for the ending of a relationship based on the free will choices of each party. If a relationship is a true twin flame relationship, then undoubtedly you and that person will find your way back together because it's in the contract. However, if it's a karmic soulmate relationship, it could be temporary or it could be for life. Again, it just depends on what is in the contract. Often what happens is that the soul will set up a series of karmic soulmate relationships for you to traverse through and learn from, and then if you finally do learn what you needed to learn from those, you will be able to attract your true twin flame. This is what I call a type 2 twin flame. A type 1 twin flame, which is less common, is when two people come together early in life, then go through several, several separations as they each negotiate their own individual ascension journeys before coming back together for good. What's crucial to understand is that if you are in a relationship in which you intuitively feel like it is coming to an end, it is not because you've done anything wrong or failed your journey in any way. Quite to the contrary, the reality is that when a relationship comes to an end, it is because you have learned exactly what you were meant to learn from the relationship. Again, whether you are fully aware of it or not, and it's now time to move on. Usually, let's face it, breakups aren't mutual. And in the case of lightworkers, what most often happens is that one person's vibration accelerates at a much quicker rate than their partner's, creating a vibrational dissonance in the shared energetic field that has been created by the relationship. Naturally, the relationship will eventually have to come to a conclusion because it just will not work anymore energetically. When a partnership ends, it may feel sad on the human level, 
But on a soul level, the truth is, is that it's a cause for celebration. Souls literally celebrate the ending of a relationship because they know that the soul contract has been dutifully fulfilled. They know what it mean they know that it means an exciting new beginning for the person. Scorpio season is a time of endings and new beginnings. Many relationships will be reaching their conclusion in the next 28 days. And for those who don't, there may be twists and turns in the relationship that will need to be navigated through. With Mercury and Venus joining the Sun and Moon in Scorpio, many couples will be having conversations in which deep-seated feelings are brought to the surface. There will be no hiding from your partner or from your true feelings. Here are some questions to think about or journal on to help you decipher what is to be learned and how you can improve your romantic relationship or partnership. If I am totally honest with myself, are my partner and I growing closer together or growing farther apart? If we are growing farther apart, could I accept or at least accept a little bit more that this may be the natural evolution of our relationship? Would I desire my partner to be totally honest with me if he or she had something to tell me? If so, then is there something I'm feeling that my partner deserves to know? Am I staying in a relationship because it feels good and I truly desire to be there or because it is comfortable and recognizable? If I were to love myself just a little bit more, how might it improve this relationship? Power struggles within and without. Scorpio oversees the theme of power. Power is often a theme that comes up in family and romantic relationships, as we've discussed. Power struggles often lead to abuse and resentment. And during Scorpio season, power struggles are likely to come up to the surface, both in our individual lives and collectively. Most of the time, lightworkers find themselves on the empathic end of narcissist-empath relationships. That is, until the lightworker learns proper boundaries. When you don't feel like you're being respected or when you feel like you're being constantly drained, it is crucial that you deeply realize that you don't deserve it and there is nothing that says you have to, to, to tolerate it. If someone is being aggressive with you, a good rule of thumb is to allow them to win the argument and find a way out of the conversation. This could infuriate them even more initially. However, your safety and well-being is the highest priority, not appeasing them so that their triggers aren't activated. This is a general theme that goes on in narcissist-empath relationships. If you've ever been in one, you know what I'm talking about. Also, we are going to find our own power struggles within coming to the surface during the next 28 days. Even empaths will usually have some sort of imbalanced relationships to power that actually teeter to the narcissistic side in some cases, though often these will come out passive-aggressively or against oneself. Yes, being mean to oneself can be considered a misuse of your own power and, in a way, narcissistic to yourself. It's the funniest thing. Empaths tend to draw in narcissists, but the same tactics that the narcissist use against the empath the empath will, will, will sometimes, oftentimes, use against themselves in their own head. It's a strange thing, but energetically it makes sense. And as we break out of that pattern of drawing in narcissists to our lives, we will also stop being so mean and cruel to ourselves. Funny how that works. <laughs> Mercury stationing and about to grow retrograde. Mercury is currently slowing down and preparing to come to a halt, which means that everything communication related is currently amplified. So it is the perfect opportunity to put everything that I've already discussed into actual practice, especially between now and November 4th, when Mercury resumes normal speed, but retrograde. As usual, while Mercury is in retrograde, it is best to not sign any contracts or make any long-term commitments. Mercury resumes full speed direct on December the 8th. 
I'm wishing you an honest, transformative, and rewarding new moon in Scorpio. And a special happy birthday shout out to all of my Scorpio brothers and sisters. As a lot of you know, I am a proud Scorpio. I'm about as Scorpio as it gets. I've got four planets in Scorpio in my chart. I've actually met someone. I had a client who had five. So I was like, oh my God, you are more Scorpio than me, my friend. <laughs> but I, if, if anyone who knows me personally, I am very Scorpio. <laughs> so to all of my, um, my fellow Scorpios, a special happy birthday shout out. And if you're not familiar with who I am, my name, as you've probably guessed, is Matthew John. I am a spiritual healer, intuitive healer, uh, starseed guide international speaker, quantum energy healer, and spiritual teacher, and spiritual mentor. And I've been on a 10-year awakening journey, and um, I have a website that I would love for you to check out if you're interested in learning more about me. It is youareadivinehuman.org. Youareadivinehuman.org, all spelled out. And you can check out my library of videos and articles and more information about me, and also information about my private sessions, which I offer worldwide via phone and Skype or WhatsApp. And what I'm doing now is looking to enroll new people for my very, very popular spiritual mentoring program to start in November. And this program is intended to heal you on all levels, spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, and karmically. It is designed specifically so that we're able to address your life from many different aspects and to take you from where you're at now to a totally new, much more healed version of you when you're done with the program. I offer a four, five, six session option, also extended options, 10 sessions or more. You can check those all out on my website. Go to click on private sessions on my website. And the first tab is Spiritual Mentoring, Awakening, Coaching. Just briefly, I'll run down what you get with the program. With the Package A, which is a four-session program, you get a Soul Plan Reading Spiritual Mentoring session where I'm connecting in with my guides and your spirit guides to interpret your life plan, to look at your life plan, and to interpret what has happened through the eyes of your soul. What is the reason behind any traumatic events or significant events that you don't fully understand from your past, what is the karma that's being balanced in your relationships? Uh, Just like we we talked about karma uh, during this transmission, I do read that for you. What is the karma that's being balanced in your relationships? What happened in the most previous past life or other past lives that is irrelevant to what's going on with that relationship now? And also, I look at your future. I look at your most probable future based on hopefully – you being on your highest possible timeline, uh, what it is that you can bring forth in this lifetime, what your soul wants for you to manifest. Second session, we do quantum energy healing, a soul retrieval, an inner child healing, a cord cutting ceremony, and the quantum energy healing is just fantastic. I work with, uh, with the Ascended Masters and with angels and spirits to work on your chakras to clean it's very specific the spots we work on we know exactly kind of what is needs to be cleared out of the chakras and then we'll add new energy into the chakras get your chakras really aligned which just helps your entire life to function better and also we clean up your energy field anything that you can think of that you don't want in your energy field you will get it out we'll get it out anything that's hanging on to you that you don't need we're going to be able to get it out. Uh, That is the second session. The third session, we do an intuitive nutrition reading. So whatever you got going on, any chronic illnesses, anything like that, chronic illnesses, uh, if you got uh, long-term issues, you don't know, your diet's not working, digestive issues, or you just want to feel your best and you want to know what's going to give you the most longevity and the most energy, we will read into your body. I take a look inside your body, a uh, body scan. I take a look at, again, scanning your chakras and my guides give me some information about your body. And we talk about the best supplements and the best diet for you. Also meditations, affirmations, all sorts of stuff. You end up getting an eight to 11 page report 
in your email, which is totally comprehensive, describing the best diet and supplements and everything I just talked about for you. You get to keep as a resource. You also get a two-page shock report in your email. That's the third session. The fourth session, you get a Starseed Discovery session, which is so fun. You get to take a trip to your home planet to find out where your galactic origins are. Where did you come from? Did you come from the stars? Did you come from another galaxy? Are you another galaxy? It's actually possible. <laughs> it, it is possible to be a, to be a galaxy uh, just dressed up as a person. It's wild stuff. But you get to find out exactly where your galactic origins are. Um, that's the four-session package. You also get two bonus webinars, Putting the Past in the Past, Mastering Your Intuition. Five-session package, you get all that plus a past life regression. And it's a very special past life regression. You get to travel to two to three lifetimes to experience the most relevant past lives that your higher self knows will be most helpful for you to understand. And you also get to experience the space between lives. And you also may have the opportunity to see just those, like we talked about, the karma that's being balanced between you and other people in your life that are important to you. You might get to see who those people were in a past life. That's the five session, six session package. You get all that plus a future life progression. You travel forward in time in this lifetime to experience your highest possible future in specific time periods, a year ahead, five years, 10 years, 20. You literally see your future. It's awesome. You get all that plus you get four additional webinars with the ultimate healing package, which is package C, deeper level forgiveness, awakening divine masculine, navigating the dark night of the soul, dissolving the ego. So again, check out all the options on my website. Click on private sessions, spiritual mentoring, awakening, coaching. And if you have any questions about the packages, you can uh, just hit the button in the bottom right corner of the screen on my website. It's got my picture. It says, Matthew, John, ask, ha have questions, ask Matthew. Click on that button, type in your question and type in your email and I'll get back to you via email. I also do offer all these sessions individually. So if the package isn't for you, you just want to do one, pick whatever session sounds like the most relevant or most fun to you and we'll we can do that that works too um but uh, a lot of people really like doing the package so w whatever works for you if you have any questions again click on that tab it'll go to my email i'll get back to you usually within 12 hours if you have any personal questions uh about this new moon how it relates to you if it's anything that will not require a full reading from me i'm happy to answer it for you via email um, if it's a lengthy question that would require reading, I would also, I would, I would ask you to book a reading, but if it's a brief question, sure. Click the tab, ask your personal question. I'm happy to ask you, answer you whether it is uh, related to this new moon or just a general personal question, please go ahead and, and ask. I'm happy to, to help people out like that. Also feel free to comment below. I usually won't have a chance to get to personal questions in the comments on YouTube, but um, if you have just a general comment about the video, I, I do read all of them, even if I don't have the time to answer uh, or respond to all of them. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for being with me. I, I, I just so much love being here with you on every new moon and full moon and every major celestial event. <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm wishing you a wonderful uh, new moon in Scorpio. As I've said, it's my favorite, uh, my favorite time of year. So shout out to all my Scorpios. I've already been going through uh, crying out of nowhere and um, uh, just doing a lot of deep thinking about my life in the past few days already. Um, as a Scorpio, it's just, it's, it feels like my time to just kind of uh, reevaluate everything, really re take a look at everything in my life and, and see what I need to let go of. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't talk a whole lot about the letting go aspect I, that, you know, you'll find everyone else out there talking about the letting go, which is what Scorpio is all about. I just wanted to focus really specifically during this transmission about relationships because that the best way usually that we're kind of asked by the universe to let go is through the lens of relationships. So I hope you enjoyed the transition, the transmission today. And again, happy new moon and wishing you love. This has been Matthew John.